Well guys, we, um, we're just about to pull in and Carly and I, real quick, are gonna show you how we set up the R-Pod. Yeah, these setup instructions would, would really work with any travel trailer. Obviously, we are uh, driving and we're pulling an R-Pod uh, to 2010 Model 171. Anyway, pretty simple stuff, but we're gonna show you what we've been doing for the last four or five months. And uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so this particular park that we're in um, we made reservations and uh, they said just go ahead and pull into whatever spot you want to. So what I am doing currently, I've got my spot picked out and you can see Carly back there guide me in. How am I looking? So the biggest thing here is um, going to be our sewage connection uh, because we don't have a ton of hose to hook up with. Connections are usually on the driver's side of everything you drive. In fact, I think everyone's is. And uh, anyway, so that's going to be our big thing, is making sure that we are close enough to everything that we've got to hook up. Um, there's going to be our sewer connection. And here's our little setup where our gray and black tanks drain from. So that's good proximity. And then that box is going to be your electricity. And our water is going to come from right here. Now that we're backed into our spot where we want to be, um, first order of business is making sure we're level. On our R pod, we've actually got this handy dandy little leveler, and it's going to show us how our level is sitting front, back, and side to side. Um, so if I adjust this here, It'll show me how many inches we need to raise that side to be level. So we've got about three inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually set um, three boards underneath this side. So we got Carly driving, and we've got our boards lined up. I got our little ramp, so it makes it easy. And we're going to end on those three boards. All right, hon, go ahead and bring it back, nice and easy. Okay, perfect. So, let's go ahead and do that. So I just want to, I, I'm a little anal about this stuff. I like to be lined up nice and nice and straight, so. All right, huh, nice and easy. Go ahead and bring her on back. Stop. Perfect. Okay, so there you go. Um, so that is where this bad boy is gonna sit. So let's go ahead and check our level real quick. Okay, and you can see there, really we couldn't have done any better. Not right on. So we're gonna go ahead and unhook, and before we have to, before we do that, we have to unlock unlock the deadbolt. Ugh, I can't talk, I've been driving too long. We're gonna unlock the deadbolt, uh, release that, and then pop open the hitch cover. <laughs> I'm making up fancy words. Perfect. <laughs> so we're unplugged here, but before we completely release and raise that up, Wes is gonna, going to chuck the wheels up in case it does start to roll a little bit, uh, it won't go anywhere. Yeah, um, so that's very important that you chalk the wheels of your rig before you release it from the Jeep or from your tow vehicle. As soon as I release from this, it's free weight and it'll move and roll on its own. So. We're gonna have to chop this up before I uh, crank it down. So Wes just chalked one side of the R pod, and then he will chalk the other, and then we will not roll away into the woods. This is my favorite part. I always feel like Jeep just like breathes a deep sigh of relief as, as soon as we uh, pull the R pod off. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, thank you. All right, you're good. Pull ahead. It's free. And then sometimes we have to crank it back down so we can get it more level. So right now where the hitch is um, towards the front, it's a little too high, so we have to lower it back down. Now that we've got it all leveled out, 
um, using the blocks and using the front hitch. Uh, the last step that we have to do to make sure our camper doesn't move, particularly when we're inside of it, is stabilization. So this process is going to be different for just about everyone. Uh, when we first tried to load down the camper and offload this thing and set it all up, I actually thought that these stabilizers were levelers. Huge mistake on my part, so make sure just on, you know, with whatever you have, whatever camper or trailer, make sure you know the limitations of your stabilizers or potentially levelers if you have levelers on the side of your vehicle. Alright, so now Wes is hooking up our electricity, which we will plug into our camper here. So before you hook it in, you want to make sure that um, all the switches are off and then you can plug it in and then turn whatever you need back on. 30, 50, so the one in the middle is the one we need. So Wes will flip it on. Yeah, and this is very typical with just about any campground. There'll be regular plugs here that run off this 20 amp and then the cord that we use is a 30, it's a three prong and then this four prong is for your 50 amp. And the bigger. So, I actually pointed out a different spot a minute ago and then noticed that the water hookups were here so um, there's several places we can hook up but what we're going to set up is um, I have a splitter that we're going to use um, so I can hook in this little short cut piece of hose um, to later use to wash out our sewer system when we leave and if we just need any sort of water to do anything that we're not worried about drinking um, we'll use it off of this. And then your drinking hose, which should be white, um, is going to hook into the other end. It'll be hooked into the camper. It'll be on all the time. Um, do, um, I've got all of our water line hooked up. We actually went ahead and bought one of these little RV filters. You can find them all over the place, camping stores. We bought this one at Walmart. Um, kind of a cheap thing, but makes us feel a little better, I guess, about drinking water. Anyway, this isn't important, however. Um, this little copper piece you see here is. So this is actually going to be our water pressure regulator. Um, it's going to regulate it down to 45 PSI so we don't destroy all the hosing inside of our camper. Uh, the one other thing that you really want to make sure is that the flow of all your hoses goes the right way. Hosing is pretty easy. It's only going to hook up one direction. But you want to make sure that all the water is flowing in the direction that these little units say they should be. Just about everything you hook up is going to have some sort of arrow on it. The last thing that we really have to do outside of the camper is hook up our sewer line. So um, again, this is going to be different for most of you guys, I'm sure, but uh, you should have stored on the front of your camper a hose. Um, ours is literally right underneath our propane tank, so you want to find that tube wherever it is, um, and that's where this should be at. So um, you can tell which end's going to hook. It's got a bunch of knobs right here that'll hook around. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hook that up. And then you're going to need this little kind of like three-way connector piece. I say three-way because it's got three different sizes on it. But you absolutely need this piece almost everywhere you go to, in order to hook up. Um, so this is going to screw in right here where I just removed this piece from. Screw that up pretty tight. And then take your hose and seat it in just like that, okay? Um, you can also buy these little carriers. We've just got a little piece of one because our pipe is pretty small. Uh, Carly likes to refer to this thing as the poop caterpillar. <laughs> um, because the way that they look whenever you see a big long line of them is kind of funny. It looks like a big long caterpillar. Or poop. Or poop. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, what that does is kind of help hold it up off the ground so the water flows properly um, where it's supposed to go. I'll go ahead and release our gray tank that way whenever we do wash water down the drain and showers it'll automatically come out so um we're going to turn the propane on real quick pretty self-explanatory one way is going to turn to open one way is going to turn to close uh, we are going to open this nice and slowly our valve here has kind of been funny it's old and weird on these like newer or the older model r pods so I'm going to take probably 30 seconds to open this thing nice and easy. And then that's that. Our propane is on. So now that everything's set up, the last thing you do is 
check the damage inside the camper. Hopefully you tied everything down pretty well and had it in a good spot. Clean up the mess, pull out any of your lawn chairs, and uh, set your tables up and relax. All right, so lawn chairs are out. Space is cleared. We've got our little dinette set up. Um, really the only other thing that you might want to make sure and do is switch your fridge over to the proper setting. So as you travel, you should have this on battery mode, especially if you're keeping something inside your fridge. And we want to make sure and switch over to the electricity. As you can see there, it's designated by a little plug. That way we're not running off the juice in our battery. Well, thanks for watching our setup video. Uh, I'm Wes. I'm Carly. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Go For Broke. We uh, post videos whenever we can. On the road, Wi-Fi is a little, little bit tricky, so um, we'll be posting some more videos real soon. Anyway, it's just our travels and journeys around the uh, country. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.